Hi everyone and welcome to Nemwe Ornamental Fish Farm. Yeah. Um, 
And then we also have South Africans, obviously. I'm a South African. I'm <laughs> not the one, but, uh, yeah, and among other people, also South Africans, we're a whole multi African national team and we work together. And, it's, uh, and, and, I, and I train the people to work a section and they manage it. John over there manages all the and goldfish. He does everything um, with a couple other guys, and I don't have to touch it. Really, I just, you know, I hardly look there. People come in and say, what for you got to do? I said, I speak to Johnny, so Johnny knows what's going on there. And um, same with the Malawi section. I'm involved in that heavily, so I have a guy that works with me. There's two of us that uh, the breeding and maintaining. So I think there's a lot of money involved. I think on the export, when we get there, there might be, you know, but um, I do it because I love it, not the money. Uh, there's been investment here. I'm fortunate to have family investment that has created this sort of foundation and it's a business which I have uh, got involved in. I've been passionate about it since I was four or five years old. The hobby that I started and it's just grown out of control. It's like a monster now, huge, you know, 23 staff. I could do with more. I think we need about 50 here, but obviously with the costs involved, it's you know, no, unless there's more questions, I mean, we can, we can stand there and we can ask questions and we can get going. You know? Just while we're here, the bathroom is that door over there. If you guys want to go there, see that wooden door there? Yeah. Just past the boat. That, that's the bathroom. If anyone needs the bathroom, that's where it is. Okay, um, but that's my generator. So the generator runs almost the whole thing. We sometimes have to come out, the power will trip again. And then we just have to come and switch one or two heaters off. There might be two running in a tunnel, we put on one. Um, most, mostly the, the heaters are on at night, not in the day. If the sun shines, we switch them off in the day. We'll put them back on at night. If it's cold and overcast and day, so this is basically on seven. on any time when when ESCOM decides to put off, you gotta you gotta be awake to say okay yeah. something's yeah. tripping, we gotta go out. My guys also jump. I'll come out. My manager lives here. This is his house. Two of my guys, John and another guy on the other side. Four of us will come out, and the five guys out will all come out, come and check up what's going on. What size? What size? Do you? You're asking me. I've actually forgotten. Six hundred. Yeah, it's about two. Yeah, about half the size of that. Oh, so I forget what size it is. My apologies. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I just it down in terms of the <laughs> okay, the, okay, so we raise most of our coin goldfish in these clay ponds. In the summer, you can also put uh, tropicals out here, though, in the summer, but you've got to be careful, obviously. But the water temperature is usually fine. The wall at the bottom, we've actually just redone it with conveyor belt. We had a corrugated plastic which was cracking up, but the conveyor belt will last. That's to keep the black and the frogs out there, from Port Frog. They cause me huge loss, you know. They oh, yeah. all a little fry, the plug yeah. on us, yeah. And uh, so, and then the electrical wire we've also just put on. We never used to have that, um, but we've had a huge influx of otters. I found up to five otters in one pond that night. Whole family, mom and four babies. But Fantastic, eh? Baby babies, they're bigger already. <laughs> yeah. um, sorry, just be careful of the fence around the pond with the kids also. You're welcome to walk, but yeah. Uh, but if we can just stay in a group also, but. Um, yeah, so the, that's not to keep the otters out, that electrical fence. It's got a light on it there that tells us that it's on. You can't really see it so well in the day, but at night you can see it flashing. But yeah, that keeps the otters out. Uh, and then the, the nets are for the birds, obviously, keep the birds out. Um, yeah, our facilities, you'll see the nets, we actually need to replace them sometime, but they've been here for almost 20 years. The portable, also, we're going to slowly start replacing the liners and everything. Um, but yeah, this is mainly the coin goldfish breeding area over here. We will breed a few tropicals in these small ponds and a few live berries in the big, big ponds in the summertime. But yeah, this is mainly where we do the koi and goldfish breeding. The koi breeding stock are at my house. We walk past the pond with the males, the females at my, my house. We'll put them here. 
Lots of koya. So we bring them here to spawn. Once they've laid their eggs, we remove them again. We put the female back where she belongs. Usually we put a separate here actually for a night or two just to recover. And we put the males back where, where they belong. Um, yeah, and then those are the two Malawi tunnels. Uh, the one on the right, that's all Malawis, the smaller one. That's what I started off with. Um, Pierre, uh, you guys remember Pierre, the past work he mentioned? What, what was his surname again? From Somerset West, yeah. That's his tunnel. Yeah. So I bought that from him years ago. That was my first, that's how I started off, like 20 years ago, just for that little tunnel. And then we added the bigger one. Um, what's what's yeah. the cost for something like that? The cost of that? Yeah. To put a whole, we did these now more recently here. With the pond and stuff, they cost about half a million rand. <laughs> <laughs> Build the pond and stuff with the machinery and everything. That's what they cost, you know. And, um, but you can buy them second hand. Yeah. I mean, that was second hand. That one I bought second hand. I think I paid for that big one there a while ago. I joined three tunnels together. I think I paid about 60 for that one, but second wow. hand, just the frames. And you've got to buy the plastic. The, the plastic, plastic yeah. for that. UV plastic, eh? Yeah. 15, maybe even more now, 20 pegs for plastic for that one. Yeah. And then you've got to have it installed, you know? So yeah. if you get someone to install, it costs you another 20 or 30 grand to have it done. I've yeah. installed it myself. My son woke up the one morning and woke me up. He looked down his bedroom. His bedroom was on that side of my house. Oh. My house there. He says, Dad, and his eyes are this big. Big problem. Middle of winter. Windy, rainy day. He says, look out the window. That whole tunnel was gone. Oh it's my head. It was blown over this side and ripped. It was all lying on this side. The oh. whole tunnel. And it's middle of winter. The water is already 18. And it's been open the night some period. It's raining. It's windy. Windier than this. Now you've got to get that thing covered. We took the plastic lying on the floor and we put it on top of the water trying to leave a bit of an uh, air gap to try and keep the heat in. You can't heat because you don't have heaters in the water. You've got a fan heater heating the area. Oh my gosh. And then we had to still organize the plastic and put it on. And we were flying. Like, we were literally, our feet were lifting off the ground. Me and my guys, we put the plastic on in the rainy weather and stuff in a day. Oh, that's, sure. that's a big <laughs> panic. You know? Tell me, bro. And the water dropped down to 12 that day and then it slowly went up again and the fish survived. Yo, just they, they work on the room temperature. Yeah, yeah. My, my ponds here, these and are it's already, down already down here, four, five degrees in the winter. It's a massive risk. Occasionally, there's an, a, a tropical fish, a swordtail, a guppy, a Malawi even, that gets left. Say we raise some Malawi in that small clay pond there. We won't raise them here, which is always koi. But, and then they drain it and the oaks are taking all the fish out. And in a footprint, there's a Malawi that's left there. But yeah. then they pull the pond up a day later and that Malawi is still sitting there. <laughs> and then they chuck goldfish in for the winter. Then sometimes the following summer when we drain that pond and the goldfish have grown out, the oaks will be having them in nets here and they're sorting them. There's a big Malawi. He was this size, but he survived the whole winter in wow. the great pond. Wow. It happens. It happens. I won't go and chuck a thousand Malawis in there and do it. As a belief, as a belief, me and Sam, we don't need that These six Malawis come from, which are like this, almost as big as your hand. Yo. And they're in amongst the coin goldfish. It happens if they survive the whole winter yeah. and that water goes down to four or five degrees, you know? Yeah. It's just a non sort of, it's stressful from the cold point of view, I think, but all the other fish are happy and they're feeding. And I, I don't know, but they, they sometimes survive, you know? Not always, but sometimes they yeah. survive in the cold. <coughs> so I think the more we breed them in this kind of environment, the more they adapt to it also, mm. you know, uh, to cooler temperature. All right. So let's walk through here, guys. You, I'm going to let you go inside here. This is still not operational. I'm, uh, I'm going to convert. We're not actually, funny enough, I'm importing guppies at the moment. Guppies I'm importing and different types of sharks. That's all I'm importing. Everything else that you see, we're doing here. We're doing 98% of the fish ourselves. This half is going to become, a, it's empty at the moment. We containers and stuff. And when we start doing guppies, we were doing guppies, but this season I stopped because I don't want to hybridize them, you know. When the environment and the amount of ponds I had, I, they got a bit of, uh, there was a bit of hybridization going on. Yeah, I'm going to set up separate tanks that I can actually do all the different types of guppies because it is quite a high value fish for us. So this side here, my, you'll see my, if you knew my shop at Cape Garden Center two years ago, I closed down. The big tanks that were in there are now in here. And I've got some American cichlids. They don't really make me money. No one wants to buy big American cichlids. We sell them young. So we do breed a few, a few of them. But you literally have to spawn one pair for the year. And that just sort of keeps our supply going. You know, so that we have them on our list. So you guys are welcome to walk through there and see the few fish that are in there. 
I'm gonna let you in now, but let's go like 10 people at a time, you know? Um, so it's not overcrowded. You guys can go first, man. It's still under maintenance, so like I said, it's not running the way it's supposed to, but we're getting there. Ik lijk smoes sikker setups, man. Ik was daar hier. So, bakkies, ik wil plastic zien, man. Ik lijk smoes met plastic, man. It's very hot for the metal roof. I've still got to insulate the roof and everything. But it's, yeah, it's not, it's not really a production facility yet. We're getting there. bags of youngsters and we've only done like half the system or a third of the system then i gotta go find tanks there then i gotta shift fish around that are about the same size and make space so it's not easy to actually breed all the species that we have here and do it on a sort of three weekly basis when they're carrying it's very hard to keep up um, they breed well in the early sort of uh, sort of from spring through to around october and then it gets a bit hot you know november december so in november they start to slow down because it gets too hot even though we keep the tunnels open, it still gets uh, too hot. We try and pump dam water, which comes from deep, to try and cool them a bit. But um, when the water reaches above 27, 28, 29, even close to 30, we don't like to go over 30, the Malawis almost switch off. And then just before winter again, about March, in a Feb, halfway through March, now they're still breeding slightly. We're still getting youngsters, you know. So as it starts cooling, then we have a bit more success too. But when it's really hot, they slow down here, you know, which is yeah. a little problem because sort of peak season, but um, that's how it goes, you know. I don't have a chilling system, that would obviously be more. Yeah. You could do that, but then that's more electricity involved to, to run it. Um, okay, Mustafa, he's, uh, he runs the little hatch at my house. There's two little windows on the left behind the tip salt tree, so he runs that. He's also a handyman here, so I can do anything, you know. If there's a pipe broken, there's an electrical problem, plumbing problem, you call him and another Sean man thinks you're talking yet, about you know. him, eh? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, but Mustafa is also used to work in my shop, so he's worked with the public a lot, and everyone used to know him in my shop here at uh, Cape Garden Centre, but he's also a very valuable part of the whole team here, you know. Um, yeah, but, right, you guys are welcome to go in. I think let's send like 10, let's say maybe like 10 people in here and 10 in here, and you walk all the way down to the end and then come back here. There's two walkways. Can go down the one, go back around to the other one. So let's go, maybe ladies first. Better climbing, or yeah, better climbing, eh? Yeah, guys, I don't want to leave them out too long, but yeah, let's just move a bit further away. That's all, I've got them. I've got them, boy. That's boy, eh? Did you see the zones? No. Yeah, bro. One fly. Oh! Just, uh, just orange crisp, no? At first thought it was the Mailandi, but it's not, it's the zone. When you go that side, you see the uh, blue on their face. I'll go on a chicken, eh? Yeah, there you can see it. Eh? Did you see the astrophysics in the last Some got yellow, eh? Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. No, man, like a yellow place. I 
Yeah, I'm taking it. I'm going to be here all day. And so is everybody else. Which one? Zums. You guys saw these, eh? Yeah, yeah. I'm There's so much of this already, no? and there's so much that we haven't found. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get some of the Zims. Oh, this is nice. Oh, this is nice. This is pretty. Yeah. I'm telling you, karma. They karma. They karma. They karma like this. Nice engineer. Buna's not bang, eh? Oh, Afro Kuboy. Here's the Afro Kuboy. Look at that. What are they small? So it's fine to pour more water out? Yeah, yeah. Guys, let's go out and we can basically. It's on the color but more because of the warm weather we've yeah. got people also now, you know, but they're gonna be in shock because the cold's coming again soon. Anything on top of this? Do you have in stock of these now? Not to sell, no. Okay. And I've got little youngsters just out the mouth, but that's it. I checked a few days ago, got about three millimeter and that's about it, you know, out the mouth. Okay. They are culling hearts severely, you know. Yeah. And this is natural funny carpa. And the fact that they get that. Born in a lot of the bruiny carpa. Myself, Brandon, and from the entire RBC group, just want to thank Neil and the entire crew of Newberg Farms for the awesome welcome. And we hope to see you guys soon.